Good morning, and welcome to the Abyssinian Baptist Church of Philadelphia virtual Sunday service. We pray that all is well with you, and we thank you for joining us this morning, and pray that you are blessed with Pastor's message. We hope you enjoy. God bless, and stay tuned.
living in troubling times. And no one needs to tell you that this coronavirus has impacted every household, not only in our community, in our city, but in our nation, and has even extended into a global proportions. And with that being said, there's a lot of anxiety, a lot of uh, panic, if you will. A lot of folk are wondering, how am I going to get through this? Will we get through this? But I'm here to encourage those of us that have a relationship with God the Father, through God the Son. God will keep us. He said he would. And I want to give a message today that I'm hopeful will encourage each and every one of us to let us to know that we're going to get through this. Meet me this, if you will, in 2 Chronicles chapter 15, beginning at verse 5. 2 Chronicles chapter 15, beginning at verse 5. Now I'll be reading from the NIV translation. I think it speaks best to what I'm trying to convey to you, our listeners, to my church family and those that are listening uh, on today. Second Chronicles chapter 15, beginning at verse 5. Now, I'll give you a few minutes to get there because everybody, uh, you know, this is an Old Testament passage. You know how they say, blow the dust off of it. When you get to Second Corinthians chapter 15, verse 5, say amen. And I'll give you as much time as you need, as long as it's not too long. <laughs> Second Chronicle, Chronicles chapter 15. Verse 5. Are you there? Amen, Pastor. Verse 5 says, In those days it was not safe to travel about, for all the inhabitants of the lands were in great turmoil. Verse 6. One nation was being crushed by another, and one city by another. Why? Because God was troubling them with every kind of, don't miss this word, distress. I want to talk around the thought, the subject, God's wake-up call. God's wake-up call. You need to know that everything that happens is for a reason. There's nothing that God allows or that happens in our life, my life, your life, that does not have purpose. And we may not like what's going on, but if we're true to what we say we believe that God is in control, then we need to remember and understand that God is, in fact, in control. There is a common denominator that all of us, most if not all of us, are experiencing during these times of trouble with the coronavirus. No peace. We're living in a world, a community of despair. Uh, our families are in despair. Our nation is in despair. There's global despair. It's a time of restlessness, no peace. But notice verse 6 says, and it's very important, for God troubled them with every kind of distress. Do I need to repeat that? It says, for God troubled them. Wait a minute. God troubled them? Yes. God knows how to give us or get our attention. And we need to understand, verse six is very, very significant. Now remember in the Old Testament, when God wanted to address his people, or the people who had departed from him, or were being disobedient, God had a way of getting them, or getting their attention, if you will. Now, in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians, particularly chapter five, uh, that's a recorded with the death of Jesus Christ in history. God reconciled the world to himself through the sacrificial work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice in these times, as we're living in today, because they are very difficult times, I don't mean to uh, uh, make it lightly because it's for some it's even more difficult than for others. I mean, when you, you, you got long lines going into the stores and you're waiting for hours. I've heard of horror stories. As a matter of fact, I was involved in one of those times when I went and I said I wasn't gonna worry about it and not get caught up in the panic and the rush, but guess what? When I saw other people rushing, guess what? I said, wait a minute. I better get in line also. 
But notice 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and the Bible says again, in those times or in these times, God doesn't deliver his judgment as he used to. In other words, Dr. Tony Evans, he says God displays his passive judgment. Notice Romans chapter 1. It's very, very important. Romans chapter 1, three particular verses in particular. Verse 24, I'm talking about Romans chapter 1. Rome, and read it when you get home. You don't have to look at it now. Romans chapter 1, verse 24, verse 26, and verse 28. There's a repetition there in those verses. And it says, God turned them over. God turned them over. God turned them over in each of those verses. Now, understand he turned them over because they would not turn to him. He released them. In other words, God will give you what you're asking for. And it may might not be the right thing for you. But he turned them, the Bible says, over to themselves, listen, to let them see what life would be without God. Sometimes God says, oh, you don't want to be with me. You don't want to obey me. You think uh, uh, I'm too restrictive in, 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 in what I'm asking you to do. And you keep, Lord, I want to do it my way or the highway, so to speak. God says, fine. I'm going to let what you say you can't live without be the very vehicle that's going to draw you back to me. So you need to understand Romans 1 describes what it is like when people disregard God. When people don't want to hear what God has to say, when people don't want to obey God, God will create a void, if you will, or a space that usually he only occupies. But when you say, God, I don't want you, I don't need to hear from you, or I'll call on you when, when I, well, you know, like a cosmos genie, God says, wait a minute, I'm not a cosmos genie. You don't want me? God says, I'm going to let you see what it is without me. So the void that I usually feel, something else or someone else is going to take that place. You need to understand, God says, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to force you. As a matter of fact, the reason I'm saved today is because God loved hellishness out of me. When I should have been penalized, when I should have been judged, God didn't do it. He looked beyond my faults and he saw my need. God says, again, since you don't want me, I'll get out of the way. That's what he's basically saying. He says, I'm going to let you understand or see what it is, life empty. Because you don't know you're em empty and devoid of, of, of who God is until you don't have God. I shudder to think of life without the Lord. As a matter of fact, the more I know about him, the more I know I need to know about him. My question to somebody today is, what, what was the problem that caused God to say what he has said in this passage. I see three causes for this chaos, at least, least three, and, and, and I want to share them with you today. And guess what? They're found in verse 3, 2 Chronicles chapter 15. The three causes that, that, that the Bible says that in, in verse 6 here, it says, uh, 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 one nation was being crushed by another and, and, and one city by another because, here it goes, God is culpable here because God was the one troubling them with every kind of distress. But why? Why? Why was God doing that? Well, let me give you the first point. It's in verse 3. It's right there. Read. Look at your Bible. It says, there was no true God. There were many gods but no true God. See, the true God had been replaced with idols. See, idols, you know what an idol is, don't you? An idol is anything you look to as that which replaces the true God. Idols can be uh, technology. You know, some people get caught up in technology. Uh, you know, you get so caught up in, in, in technology that you forget the God who's giving you wisdom to master technology. An idol could be not only technology, but it could be money. Oh, there's so many that, 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 that have an idol. The more money they have, the more detached they come or become from the God who gave them the money in the first place. And then there's another God, education. You can be so educated that you're really spiritually dumb. That's my word. You can even have your children as idols. You know what I found out? People say I live for my children or for my child. 
You want to be careful about saying that. Because if you put your, you, 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 the Bible says we ought to live to please him, the Lord. But when you say I live to, 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 to take care of my child, you're replacing God with your child. You don't want to do that. As a matter of fact, wh whose, whose hands are, they're better off with God in his hands than in your, your hands and mine. Because guess what? I'm human. I'm limited. As much as I want, as much I as I would try, I cannot outdo, neither can you outdo what God can do for us. I said verse one, or verse three, I'm sorry. The point number one, there was no true God. But then point number two, it's right in here, verse three, same passage, 2 Chronicles chapter 15. Not only was there no true God, but the Bible says there was a void of teaching priests. Look at the Bible. I'm not making this stuff up. See, in other words, when the pulpit fails, when the pulpit doesn't preach the unadulterated word, uh, rated word of God. When you don't preach truth to power, then you become confused. And the pew is the one that suffers when the pulpit, the priests, don't teach. Amen, somebody. In other words, that's a failure of the church and a failure of church leadership. The church, I find out, has placated culture and with and watered down the gospel, and they have a lack of communicating what thus says the Lord. In other words, there are people that say what God requires of me is just too tough. You know, everybody else is doing something different. But what makes that so right because everybody else is doing it? I'd rather be, listen, I'd rather have God and not need him, what I always will, than, than need God and not have him. I'd rather do it God's way than my own way. The, the, the Bible teaches when it says that, that they were void of teaching priests. The folk, too many people in the pulpit, and I'm not trying to make myself somebody that's superior to any other preacher or pastor, no. But I'm just convinced, and I, my conviction says, preach the word. Whether they want to hear it or don't want to hear it. Whether it's popular or unpopular. Whether it's going to uh, uh, put more money in your pocket or not. Because the God that I serve, he's the one that supplies every need that we have. Am I right about it? Somebody know that if the truth be told, if it had not been for the Lord on your side and mine, we wouldn't be where we are today. Even with the coronavirus, people don't have jobs, this, that, and the other. But guess what? God can supply and make a way out of nowhere. Can he do that? Can he do that? Anybody other than me know that God is a way maker? I wish I had somebody that would just, just, just give me a witness. I said, God wants us to preach his word, to teach truth. Matter of fact, a whole lot of folk say that they follow Jesus, but they only follow him based on as far as he goes along in their mind with what they feel comfortable with. But you know what? There were those back when Jesus was walking, when he was mingling, that said they were searching for truth. Jesus came right out and said it. Really, if you're looking for truth, I am truth. I'm the way. I'm the truth and I'm the life. Now, you either, either lie or he's telling the truth. And he's telling the truth. I wish I had some witnesses up in here. I repeat, there was no teaching priest. That's what the Bible says. The pulpit, the pulpit should be speaking truth again to power. And not only with power, but with clarity. Speak to, you know, when you want everything else to be communicated and you want people to hear. Why is it that all of a sudden we get numb and mumbling? When it comes to, oh, we don't want to, we whisper certain things because it might offend somebody. Don't you know that God says his word would offend? Brother against brother, sister against sister, father against uh, 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 the wife, or uh, the husband against the wife, and the wife against the husband. Truth will cause you to make a decision. What's your decision today? See, we got to preach that which overrides what people think. God wants us to preach that what, uh, other than what mom and dad taught us. And I'm not saying mom and dad didn't have right intentions, but some of that stuff just wasn't biblical. And when you, see, it's a different thing when you don't know. But when you do know, you've got to practice and preach and teach and say what you do know. See, I can't plead ignorant all the time. Teachers, we have to preach. Preachers, we got to preach the truth. Again, not only uh, uh, when folk want to hear it, but when they don't want to hear, let them get mad. I'd rather have people mad with 
listen, I'd rather have God mad with you than with me for not preaching truth. Now, understand, not only no true God, not only no teaching, but wait a minute, it's in verse 3. It's right here. There was no law. And when I'm talking about law, it's right here in verse 3. The people had no guidelines to govern them. They, they really didn't have from the pulpit what they needed in order to live a life, at least try to model a life that God wanted to, them to. See, you have to have law. You have to have direction. And what I see and what I believe you don't see, see, the coronavirus, listen, that's what I believe God is using to reconcile his people back to him. He's trying to get our attention. He's loving us. He's, he's, he's the God of a, I'm talking about a, a second chance, another, he's another chance. I don't know, listen, I don't even know how many times that God has given me another chance. What about you? Hasn't God given you more chances than you could even give anybody else? But God says, wait a minute, I don't want to do it. But there is chaos now, not because I wanted to put it on you or place it on you, but I need to do something that's going to get you to stop looking down and stop looking around and start looking up. Question somebody said, all right, pastor, all right, preacher, I hear what you're saying, but is there a solution? What is the solution? Well, verse four, I'm still in the passage. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse four says, but, consecrated conjunction, but in their distress, they turned to the Lord. That's what the Bible says. I'm looking at, but in their distress, I'm reading the Bible, they turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him, and he was found by them. What does that say? God had to allow stress. He had to send coronavirus in order to get us to understand and know that God doesn't want us to do anything we want to do. God says we get so preoccupied with us, self, that we forget there's a God that wants to rule. And matter of fact, he, he only does that because he loves us so much. The solution, the Bible says, is because God says, I'll use the trouble to draw you near me. How do you seek him is the question I'm asking before I close. How do you seek him today? Are you seeking him? Do you need more than a coronavirus to get your attention focused on the God of heaven? Are you still going to say you're going to handle it your way? I know the press and certain people in, in leadership say, listen, we're going to get through this. But it's not going to be because what they did is going to be because of God's grace and his mercy. How many of us know that if it was not for God's grace and mercy, we, I know that people have died and, and that's a tragic thing. But think about it. You and I that are listening today, it's only because of his grace and mercy that you and I are able to respond. We're not laid up in a hospital. Our children are still around. And guess what? Here, I hate to say it, but guess what? And I don't have a death wish. If God were to take me right now as a result of the virus, I do know I'd be with him. But listen, let me leave this with you. God wants us to pursue a relationship with him. And God wants us to submit. You're going to submit to somebody's authority. But I like what 2 Chronicles chapter 7, around verse 14 says. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then, God says, that's conditional. Then will I hear from heaven. God says, I need to hear some humble people. I need to hear some people that are responding as a result of knowing that I'm still in control. I need some folk that are gonna, that know that I can do anything but fail. The same virus that captivated and has captured the attention of globally is the same virus that God can <laughs> blow away. Be encouraged, my brothers and sisters. Be encouraged today. God doesn't want to hurt us, but he loves us so much that he can't allow us to do what we want to do. Draw closer to him, and he'll draw close to us. God bless you, and heaven smile upon you. To our ABC Church family and friends, we truly hope this message has been a blessing to you and your family. 
We look forward to sharing God's word with you again in the near future. Because of the coronavirus, we're not able to gather together in one local assembly, but audio and video technology allows us to come together. To God be the glory. You know we support our church and its ministries by our giving through tithes and love offerings support for me, your pastor. To give, please click on the links below. Again, please stay encouraged. Remember Psalms 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in our time of trouble. God bless you.